Hey there, Dan Gastu here. Today's video is about making a door for the side of the steel trawler and is proudly sponsored by MarineEngine.com. The first thing I'm going to do today is cut a door in the side here. I've decided to take this panel out and I'll show you why. I think this one here is out of the question because it's actually sort of forward the wheelhouse. This one, if you're at the wheel, is the quickest one to get to. You come out of the door and you're pretty much just here. Next one along has the fuel filler and the fuel breeder. And I think by the time you get to the next one, you're just sort of getting too far from the wheel. So I've decided this is the one I'm gonna cut out. Because we've got the round pipe on the top here, I've decided I'm gonna use the large grinder to cut right through the pipe. Then I think what I'll do is use the oxy to cut down the rest of it here. I'm certainly no expert with oxy cutting, but I believe it's going to need bare metal in order to really get the heat to conduct properly. So I'll get in with the flap disc and just get all the paint off the strip where I intend to cut as well. Alright, that cut through there nicely enough, nice and easy, and same on the other side. So the idea is that I'm cutting just inside this brace, so that this side that remains is still well braced, and obviously this side the same, and it also gives me some metal here to hang my hinges off. There's a little tab at the top there that I will be cutting off, but for now I'm going to use it to tie a line to, to stop the piece of metal falling out when it cuts right through. Okay, now I'm going to sand off that thin strip of paint where I'm going to be cutting. Alright, that paint came up pretty quickly with the flap disc. I couldn't quite get into the corner though, so I'm going to extend the cuts with the angle grinder a little bit more, and then we'll get in with the Oxy. Although I've got no real experience with oxyacetylene, it was pretty easy to do. Uh, I've actually got the new bits for the plasma cutter, but I've actually always found plasma cutting a bit hit and miss, and this relatively easy in comparison, so interesting to see that. I'm not going to cut all the way to the deck though, because as we learnt last week, this part of the deck is actually the fuel tank, so I'm going to stop there, cut the other side, I'll do the last little bit with the angle grinder. Might be tricky to fit it in, so I might have to get the you know the best cut I can and then grind back the excess. I'm not worried about cutting the very bottom of the door off because the door needs to swing and because the deck slopes, if the door starts flush, it won't be able to swing. It needs to start high enough that it can swing onto the deck. So I'm not super worried about getting a cut flush with the deck. So better safe than sorry, stop there, do the other side.
this is as low as I could get to the deck unfortunately so now just a bit of grinding to get this flush All right, the edges of ground now, reasonably smooth, down to the deck, and same on the other side. So now I'm gonna get a little bit of round stock to go in here, weld that up, grind that smooth, then we'll clean the old paint off, and we'll prime this. The plan is to make the door out of the bit we cut out, obviously. Dave's head of the design team, so what you got? Um, we're working on it. <laughs> Work in progress. You don't look like you're working very hard on it. It was suggested that if we brought this pipe out at 45 and then had another bit of pipe coming around, the hinges would sit on the round and it would swing both ways nicely. Very tempting idea. But what I think is going to be a bit easier and simpler. Is just having a bit of flat bar that gives us the return on the end here rather than just being the bare edge and also completely encloses the end of the pipe. But before I do that, I'm going to square it up and do a straighter cut here. So which way should it hinge pedals? I think hinges that side so that when it opens, it opens like this and you've got a straight run from the wheelhouse out. If it opened the other way, you'd have to go around the door and into here. What about for the majority of your time you'll be going forwards yeah it hinged here so if it ever came loose you're not going to get a wave pushing open. fair point fair point it'll be hinging like that yep so it's like a suicide door in a car otherwise yes that's a suicide door isn't it yes so if you're hinging like that it might get bashed in if you're hinging like that it might get bashed in and wreck mm. so you're saying have a strong latch at that end yep to make sure that doesn't happen yeah yeah so the hinges I think are pretty strong, but I haven't decided on a latch mechanism at all. Maybe it's the big drop bar. Mm, something pretty strong. Mm. Also, because the hinges are just um, pintles that drop down, there's a chance, low chance, but there's a chance it can pop up off its hinges. So the latch should actually also stop it, not just swinging, but stop it rising. Yeah. So I'll have a think about that. All right, what I'm gonna do, you start with a bit of a rough and ready square and then we'll do our three, four, five thing to make sure it's really square. As always, I should have brought my big roofer's square from the house. I'm always missing the tools I wish I had. So using our woefully small square, looks like this edge kinks out a bit. This one kinks in a bit, but what we'll do is we'll use our two sides and our hypotenuse and figure out how close we are to square. Something Dave and I didn't really mention is that ideally swinging both ways would be great. Haha, uh -huh, yeah, jokes aside. But uh, I'd like it to prioritize opening inwards because I've definitely pulled up to wharves in this boat where the pontoon's higher and the door wouldn't open at all. So I think opening inwards is the only way I can guarantee being able to open it. But the deck slopes up, so we need to 
cut the bottom of it off so that it clears the deck. So I'm going to go with the top of the freeing port here and just extend that across to start with. Sort 717. 640 that one. Okay. So uh, let's get a longer straight edge. So really, which one's wrong? Yeah. So you're doing what I do? What's that make up as I go along? No. Um, Measure once, cut twice. Or was it? Yeah, cut twice, it. measure once. Yeah. <laughs> so, looks like what we really have is 640 still. 630 still. Ah, no, it went the other way. It made it worse. It's still 700, so it must just start getting bigger as the boat goes along. So, what's by the stern? Oh yeah, 740, it definitely gets taller. There seems to be more room to swing it that way as well. So really our top line's okay. It's okay for it to be 10 mil longer here because that is the way it naturally gets bigger. Yep, and also the, it's best to have it. Otherwise the gap at the bottom will, will increase as it comes along. Hmm. So 640, 630, we'll call it. All right, we'll live with that. And all that really matters now is that this corner is square. Well, I wonder how square this is. Do you want it to go back all the way as well? It's not square on the boat either. No. So yeah. even with this small set square, you can see this isn't square to the deck. What about that side pedals? Nope. No. Nah. So it all slopes forwards. No. So that one slopes forwards. This one slopes forwards. Yeah, they're both. So it's a bit of a parallelogram. That'll make things easier. <laughs> so if we have the door up, yep, and then have a set distance off here, whatever gap we want, and just scribe it down, okay. and the same off the deck, what's the worst that can happen? It's got to be at least a dip. It's like Mario used to say. Mario? Yeah, Mario on the island. He said, don't, don't make things square, make them dance to the music. Okay, that's good. That's what we'll do. And thank you for your words of wisdom, Mario. Yes. Come and help us. Mm. So, okay. shall we block it up to be level at the top? What do we need? Not much. No. In. You're kind of bending as well. Okay. So I'll find some more parts. Alright, let's just up. Okay, it's still a bit. Oh, yeah, that side's good. Oh, it's, both sides are. It's warped in. Yeah, it's warped from the cutting. Really? Yeah, so that's okay. I'll straighten it as I put the ends on. I'll bring it straight. This is, um, this side's fine. Yeah. So, what I think we do is measure a set distance off here, mark mm -hmm. it. Set distance off here, mark it. Yeah. Draw a straight line between the two. Okay. At least it's pa parallel will look better than... Yeah. All right. So, so this would be good. What do you reckon? Let's go 30 mil gap. Well, which are, uh, this side's the hinges, isn't it? Yeah. So I might actually go a 50 mil gap on this side. At the bottom? Uh, 50 top and bottom. Yep. Because the hinges go in. Uh, let's go 50, and then 50, all right, let's do it, okay, yep, coming down, ready, let's get this out of the way, oh, hang on, sorry, 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 sorry. Pop it back. Yep. I'll do the bottom two. Okay. All right. Yeah. So seventy off the deck. Oh, 70 off the deck. The line, this original line on the bottom, seems pretty good actually. So let's just use that. All right. Done. Okay, Stu. Next problem. Just, yep. Just while you're here, you're gonna 
I have this swinging in. Yep. Well, how are you going to get your motorbike past there? Well, the motorbike's actually going to go in there, but it's a good point. I think I'll probably lift it out when I put the motorbike on. Just it's going to be it lifted out, out yeah. as well. Okay. That, oh, the good question though is if you had a lot of people piling on board, I can get to the wheelhouse, but if people pile on board, they're all going to want to go to the back deck. You don't want them going into there. No, but if they're stepping onto... Is that just going to be... Oh, they could step over the wheelhouse, but yeah, older people, it's a good point. Yeah. Hmm. Maybe I should go the other way. Well, let's make the door first, but... Yeah. Yeah, it's a bit of a lose-lose, isn't it? Because if you come out of the way, Eddie. Shift about. Tell your story walking, buddy. Hey, we're coming through, Ed. Boom, 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 boom. So that's that way. Yeah. And then if you do it that way. Yeah. You can actually get round quite quickly. Oh, I could get round. Yeah, yeah, true. I'd rather have, yeah, good point. I'd rather have the bulk of passengers be able to get on yeah. to the aft area and I scoot round. To be honest with you, when you throw a line, you don't open the door anyway. You, no. You jump over, you throw your line without opening the door, so... Because yeah. the only time you're in a rush is when you're trying to get a line on a windy day. Suppose if you've got a crucifix here or anything. No. Well, I will install one at the yeah. back, but not here, you're right. Yeah, yeah. All right. So I think you're right. I think hinge that way. Uh, only... Um, and mo removable. Yeah. But it means you can get big things onto the deck, you can get people onto the deck. Okay. I think it's going to take many beers to find the answer to this problem. <laughs> yes. Then you go for the chain. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Then I'll just go for an open space. The space isn't bad. You just nah. put washboards in. Yeah, true. You may now return to your lounge. Thank you. <laughs> Stay there, Eduardo. So, okay. The safety Nazis will tell you not to stand on the top pedals. I know. This. PPE. Purple PPE. Yeah. Today's a very exciting day. Ed, Dave and I are all going for a haircut on the same day. We should get before and after shot, Ed. What do you reckon? Yeah. I don't think I can see you or hear you. No. I'm here, Ed. There I am. Haircut today. Dance to the music. The boat doesn't seem to have flexed at all. Maybe chomped a bit out of it. No. No. No, I think it's fine. Okay, these lines are parallel, but what I might do is offset this 20 mils this way. Same with this one, because we've now changed our mind about which side the hinges are going on. All right, now I'm going to cut it with the angle grinder because it gives a nicer cut than the oxy torch. Now all the cuts are done, I'm just going to take a flap disc and grind the paint away from the edges so we can weld the ends on. When I flipped this door over yesterday, there was quite a bit of rust in here. It's obviously where the salt water's run down and then just sort of surface tensions hung it on this bottom edge here where the freeing port was. So I'm going to cut this out and I'm going to use one of the bits I cut off to replace it and build it up again. I'm going to start by just grinding the paint off the patch. This is the bit I'm going to cut out, so I can cut in here with the angle grinder pretty easily. I'm going to do a plunge cut here, it's obviously going to cut through a little bit, but I'll weld it up as well. Alright, now I'm going to put our little Spare piece underneath with the factory edge down the bottom. And then just trace what we need to cut out. All right, now we'll just bevel the patch as well. 
Now I'm just going to set it up with a few butt welding clamps. My goal is to get the gap here and here pretty even and then have this edge flush. Then I'm going to lock them down. These little clamps look like this underneath. Then I'm going to tack here, here, here. Take the clamps off and weld it up. This poor old TIG torch had uh, so many broken bits. Its back cap had broken and everything so I jumped online and got a set of gear. It's good as like 50 bucks and oh, just loads of cups, short and long backs all sorts of stuff so I was pretty happy with that I sharpened up 10 tungstens at home so I wouldn't have to do it here give me plenty of spares First bit of welding up here, the gas was on but for whatever reason wasn't coming through so I don't know, I just gave it a bit of a tap and opened the valve even further and I don't know, it seemed to start working, not sure what the story was there. Got a few tacks here but that welding helmet's cactus, uh, it was on the ground over here and the tide got it so it's no longer activating when you start welding so I'm going to have to replace that before I go any further otherwise I'm going to go blind. With these little clamps, you pull the base out, then you can lift this wedge up through the weld so they never get stuck. All right, grabbed a new helmet, cheapest one I had, so let's hope it's all right. And while I was there, I thought if I'm gonna make the trip, I may as well buy a gouging nozzle for the Oxy so we can deal with any other welds in the future. All right gone right round now I was feeling a bit too lazy to do a little bit here flip it do it a bit on the other side so we'll just flip it and do the whole other side and hope it's straight enough I'm not too worried all right and there's that little repair from this to this I've clamped a bit of angle iron on the top to help take the curve out of the door itself before I weld the end on, that should hold it in place. I've also got a sort of 12 mil plate of steel below, mainly just to space the bottom of these clamps out so that the edge can actually come down and not hit the clamp. But obviously helps keep it straight as well. This is the bit of steel I'm going to be welding onto the edge. Little bit of a gap up in here but not so big that I can't fill it with weld. Clean this steel up, get the rust off, and we'll tack weld it in place. Because I'm going to have to hold the strip of metal with one hand while I tack it in position, I'm just going to stick weld it to do that because it's a one-handed welding operation. All right, got a clamp, then just a little TIG rod as a spacer to hold it up at the right height. This is about the right length, I want to get it in weld on the top here. Then I'll just hold the other end by hand and tack it. All right, next thing I do is use an angle grinder to cut this around the curve of the pipe here. Now what I'm going to do is cut this little tab off. This tab is stainless and the steel underneath is really badly eaten away. So we'll cut it off, see whether we need to replace a section of pipe or whatever. It's not ideal though, but we'll see what we see.
I had a few issues with the microphone at this point, but what I ended up doing was actually cutting that rusty section of top railing out entirely. Then I measured it up, uh, went back down to Hornsby Steel and found some tube that was about the right diameter that I could replace it with. Then I just cut length, dropped it in, and then started welding that in place. All right, the weld looks a little bit low here, maybe a bit hot, sort of a bit of a depression. So I'm gonna build it up with some more weld so I can flat disc it and get it looking as good as the green machine. All right, this is what it looks like now. So I could run some more TIG along here, fill it up, definitely possible. Could prime it, then put some epoxy filler on top and sand it, then paint it. Not a bad option either, really. I don't know. The reality is I've got an entire boat to make seaworthy, so how much do I agonise over, you know, the little top railing on a door? All right, you've talked me into it. One more run round with the TIG, flap disc, done. All right, with that run around, I was kind of walking the cut backwards and forwards to try and spread the puddle a little bit wide to fill that divot. Anyway, I'm going to give that one last flap disc and call it good. It looks a little bit better now, but what I might actually do is epoxy prime it, then put a bit of epoxy bog on, which I can then use just a bit of sandpaper in my hand, like a curve, and uh, and sort of get the, the surface looking a little bit better. I think it's worth it. So I'll do it that way. Now I'm just going to TIG up this end like the other end. I think I stick the other end because the other welder was dead. But now the TIG welder's back, I'll TIG up this end because you get a bit more control, grind it smooth, and then we'll get this old paint off. All right, let's ground down now. A little bit of a gap at this side. So I might give it a couple of smacks with a hammer and I'll weld it. And then if need be, I'll grind the last little bit down afterwards. So, ready to weld. Out in the yard, I found these big styrofoam panels. So I'm gonna bring one over and see if we can prop it up as a bit of a sound shield before I do the needle gunning on the door. I figure it's got to help. I've also got the door itself sitting down on a bit of a cushion. Next step is to set up the wet blaster, but I haven't set that up yet, so I'm going to do a video on that first, and then you'll be watching this now, and you've already seen that video, and anyway, it's wet blaster. So just mixing up a batch of the epoxy primer. Once this is stirred, I'm going to put a little bit of thinners in it, just because it's the first coat. It's now quite late on a Friday and I'm buggered. I've been working on the chines because I've got to get the hull ready for sandblasting. But that's not finished yet and the closest thing I've got to a video for this weekend is the door. So although it's not on the critical path, I'll push on. I won't get it finished, but I'll show you the final parts of the plan and then I'm going home. All right, so what we've got here is the end of the railing we've cut off and what I've got here is some discs I cut. Actually, it's the rod I was using to knock the rudder post out, which was an old axle. So I've cut a few slithers of these. I've beveled the edge ever so slightly. They've got a little bead here. So my plan is to pop them in here with that bead kind of facing down. Yeah. We'll see, I might need a bigger one actually. And then I'm gonna weld those out to block these holes up. So, I've got the welder here. Before I put it away for the weekend, let's get these welded up.
so this is what we end up with now. No water can get into the pipe anymore. Proper primer, bit of a sand, undercoat, paint. But we'll do that when we do the whole hole. This is the door itself after it's coated primer. And here are the hinges I'm using. These are weld on hinges, so they weld on like this. And we've got a grease nipple and a cup here, and then a pintle here. So the idea is that the door can drop on, can open and close on the hinge, and can also just lift off entirely. Now, the cup I'm going to put on the door because the door has to come down, and you obviously don't want the cup filling up with water like this. I'm not sure if the cup's the right word, but whatever the pin goes into. So what I need to do is weld the pin side onto the frame of the door on the boat. Then I'm gonna drop these on, mock the door up in position, and then weld these out. That's my plan anyway. Well, thanks for watching. The door isn't entirely finished, but I think you get the idea. Because I need to get ready for the sandblaster, I'm really just going hell for leather on the hull, which hasn't been particularly interesting filming, but I have filmed a lot of it. I've also almost got the running gear back from the, you know, DH Porter for the prop shaft, a new rudder shaft, stuffing box, all that kind of stuff. So we should have that soon. I've also been chasing ball valves, really hard to get replacements for the one I've got. But I'm starting to think that I will just get a more modern style where instead of being a bolt on flange, I'm gonna have it just come up through the hull from the other side, sicker flex around it. I'm starting to change my whole idea there. But Lots and lots of stuff's been happening in the background. Been talking to Ray Marine about getting some new electronics for the boat. Also been looking at a whole new way of handling the starting and house batteries. So we'll be redesigning that entirely as well. So lots has been happening, but I try to keep the videos themed rather than just, you know, what happened this week. And you sort of get a sense of how much running around there is on the phone, doing this, doing that. But it's really disjointed. Unfortunately, it just kind of needs to be that way. Everything has to happen in parallel. Otherwise it's not gonna get done. So next video, I think we'll be looking at all the hull repairs I've been doing. And then soon after that, fingers crossed, we'll be doing the sandblasting. Then I'm expecting to see a few other things I need to weld up. That's where I'll be looking at something like the hull blast to pressure wash the steel to give me a few days before it flash rusts so I can get that welding done before we get that first coat of primer on. Anyway, we'll see how we go with that. All right, we'll take care. Have a great weekend and I'll see you next week. Bye.